Roses are red, violets are blue. Or are they? It turns out that most plants, many uh, fruits, vegetables, flowers, etc., contain natural indicators, natural dye molecules that are different colors at different pH values. That is, they are natural acid-base indicators. And this uh, experiment that I'm going to demonstrate is called natural indicators because it involves uh, basically an inquiry-based experiment that students can run to extract natural indicators from a variety of natural sources. Uh, I can remember when we were testing this uh, experiment, this activity in the lab prior to writing it up. And we didn't know what would work and what didn't work. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in the literature. So we just, I mean, I went to the store and I bought, bought all, uh, all, ki all kinds of flowers. We bought dried flowers. We bought regular flowers. We bought all the f different fruits we could find. We would peel fruits and so on. We would take teas and juices and, and all sorts of things just to see what would give indicators, acid-base indicators, and what would not. Now, of course, many of you I know are familiar with the uh, red cabbage indicator, and that's a nice one, but, you know, and it gives a, a very nice uh, spectrum of color changes, but I don't think most students get too excited about red red cabbage. <laughs> and uh, when we were doing this one in the lab, you know what? The lab never smelled so nice as it did that, that week, basically, that we were testing natural indicators. And it was just a fun one to do. Um, and so what I've got here are several different sources of natural indicators. Just before we do that, probably the most well-known one in um, if you are a gardener, uh, has to do with hydrangeas. If the soil in which hydrangeas are grown is slightly acidic, the flowers, which are the very large hydrangea flowers, will be blue. If the soil is basic, the flowers will be red or pink and, and red. And that's a well-known example of an indicator where the color of the flower depends on the acidity of the soil. So what I have are several different sources, and we probably tested 30 different source, possible sources of natural indicators. And we're going to look at some of the ones we did test so that we can summarize what you can do. So I have here a tray just of dried rose petals. If you can see those rose petals, and actually just rose flowers, not just the petals there. I've got some of the stems. You can see the green stems. I've also got hibiscus, dried hibiscus petals here. And you can see those are a darker color than the uh, dried red rose. I'm going to go ahead and take those out of the way just so you can see what we started with. And what I did was I extracted those. So this was a... Uh, a beaker that I had added the rose petals to. And uh, you can see that if you take a look at the rose petals in there, pretty much the color out of them is gone. And the color of the liquid that remains is the red color of the liquid. And this is the hibiscus. And you can see that the hibiscus is a real deep cherry red there. Now, you can do the extraction any number of ways. If you want to do it very quickly, you simply do it like you make a pot of coffee or, or a cup of tea. That is, you extract the uh, petals, the uh, flowers, the fruits, whatever you're doing, with boiling hot water and you know a few minutes, and you're done. You can do it with a solvent if you want. You can use isopropyl alcohol. Or the easiest way, which is what I did, was simply to extract it overnight at room temperature with water. And so that's what these are. These were extracted overnight. Now, in these cases, you're going to have to filter them. You can also use tea bags. These are uh, simply, they're not labeled here, but these, I, I think, were a, a brand of herbal tea. Uh, cranberry apple was, I think, the particular flavor. Um, I'll just say something, and it may, might tell you why we chose the hibiscus. If you look at the uh, ingredients list for almost any herbal tea, it turns out that the primary ingredient, the one that's listed first on the label, is always hibiscus. So that's why we went to try hibiscus. So those are the things we used. And I then filtered them. Okay, so I filtered the rose one here, and can you can you see those well? Um, and so I have a clear a clear liquid uh, for the rose. You can see the hibiscus is that cherry red color. The cranberry tea is nice because I use the tea bags, and so I can simply decant that. So I'll go ahead and do that, and that's my cranberry tea indicator. 
And then finally, we're just going to use some grape juice. And this is 100% grape juice. It's not grape drink. Uh, we'll get that open. And you can see those all look, actually a lot of them look very similar colors, don't they? I'm going to take these things out of the way. And then I'm also going to move these out of the way so that we can focus on uh, what I've got set up here. Uh, I've got a micro scale 24 well plate set up here. And can you see the numbers on, that I've got underneath? Basically, I've got this well plate on top of a template with numbers underneath them. So the numbers are not really in the solutions. And if you can see all those numbers, it says 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then the second two rows repeat the top two rows. Okay? And what I've done already is I've pre filled those with. Uh, buffer solutions, buffer solutions from pH 2 to 12. If you've never bought capsules to make buffer solutions, it's a very convenient way. The capsule has the weighed, pre-weighed amounts of reactants that will give you a pH 4 buffer or a pH 8 buffer or whatever uh, desire you want there. And uh, I pre-made 100 milliliters of each buffer and I simply labeled them pH 2, pH 3. Very. <laughs> okay. And I have added uh, basically a pipette full, and which turns out to be about two milliliters. Uh, two, so, and obviously in order. So pH 2, pH 3, pH 4, and so on. And what we're going to do, and I've got basically two setups here so I can test two of them, is I'm going to add, in the case of the rows, I think I will add probably about four drops, four to five drops of the rose indicator to each well. So and what we're going to look at is the uh, effect of the pH on the color. And with the exception of the bubbles in there. So you can certainly see a difference in the color since, uh, well, I'm not going to do that. Um, so you can see a very interesting color gradation. Uh, in acidic solution, obviously, that pH indicator is uh, uh, pink red to pink, it goes pretty much colorless, although then it adds another color in the basic range, which is a yellow color, and then that color becomes more intense uh, until you're finally, so it would appear that that indicator has two transition ranges, uh, so instead of being just HIN for an indicator which would have one color transition, uh, such as, for instance, uh, um, phenolphthalein, which, you know, is colorless in acid, uh, fuchsia red violet in base, it basically has one color transition. It would appear that the rose natural indicator has two color transitions. And let's take a fresh pipette and let's look at the hibiscus uh, indicator. And you can see that that's a more intense uh, color, but you can also see that there's a color change there as well. Okay, so we're comparing the natural rose indicator versus the natural hibiscus indicator. And it would appear that the hibiscus basically has one color transition that is between an orange-red and a, a red-violet or a purple color there. Uh, and it would appear that the transition is between 6 and 7 in terms of that one. Whereas for the rose, it would appear that there's two transitions, one between 3 and 4, that goes from the pink to the colorless primarily, and then between seven and eight where it turns the yellow color, and then anything above that is the yellow color, which would be the basic range for that indicator. Um, let's remove that. And I have another well plate, and make sure I've got that set up correctly, and I do because 13 doesn't exist, right? And just because I, I have two more indicators, so I'm just going to go ahead and add. This shows you that this is really what I did uh, with that pre-filled plate. I wanted to do one. That's two, three, 
four, five, and we're gonna test uh, the cranberry tea and also the grape juice. This is six. Seven. Eleven. And twelve. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and first just add the cranberry tea to indicator to each one, and then I'll go ahead and do the grape juice. So this is the cranberry tea. And I think you can already see that the cranberry tea one pretty much as we uh, telegraphed at the beginning looks like very similar to, although not identical, to the, um, the way the hibiscus looked, which it appears to have only one transition range. There does appear, though, to be actually, uh, now that I say that, a different color. So we've got that orange-red. There's a transition then to a purple color, but notice out here that we actually get a green color. Uh, with the cranberry tea, so there's probably something else in there that gives that uh, transition range. Let's look at the grape juice, and again, this was just pure unadulterated grape juice. And we can see we've got more of a tan color there. So far just tan. And now you can see that it's going more toward an olive green, so that appears to have one transition. So actually, if I thought about it, I think there seems to be a similarity that the cranberry tea is maybe a combination of the hibiscus and the, the grape indicator. The natural indicators in these flowers and fruits are uh, pigments called anthocyanins. And actually, there's a, you hear a lot about anthocyanins in the news. Nowadays, it seems that nutrition is, is a, well, nutrition is a science, so we'll put it that way first. But there's a lot of almost... Um, I think they call it phytonutrition, which is nutrition having to do with plants and uh, coming from plants. And they talk about phytochemicals, which are the chemicals that come from plants that are good for you. You know, one uh, person says that the best diet you can eat is to eat a highly colored diet. That is, all the fruits and vegetables that are red, purple, bright colors rather than just, you know, <laughs> no color. Uh, that those have the, the chemicals, the phytochemicals in them that are thought to be healthy for you. You know, there's the red wine diet because of the red grapes and so on. That's, that sounds like a good diet. Um, <laughs> you know, and they're supposed to be heart healthy and so on. It turns out that these natural indicators are the same base molecules or compounds as are those phytochemicals that are thought to be beneficial in nutrition in terms of protecting against heart disease as antioxidants and so on. Um, I've summarized here on the easel, if we go to the easel, uh, some of the color changes for a wide, wider variety. Um, actually, no, the, these are for the four that we looked at. Uh, roses, cranberry apple tea, hibiscus, and grape juice. Uh, and you can see, uh, you know, we've noted here the color changes for all of those, which I think we saw pretty well. Did we get a good shot of that? Okay, on the back side here, um, I've actually summarized uh, all of the different things that we had, and I'm going to talk about that, but let's focus just on the chart there. Uh, all of the types of things that do give good indicators, uh, natural fruit and vegetable indicators, red apples, uh, beets, uh, blueberries, red cabbage, of course we talked about cherries, cranberries, uh, grapes, red or purple, onions, red onions peaches, plums, radish skin. We, we tested all of these. We had fun that week. Uh, rhubarb skin, strawberries, uh, tomato leaves, turnip skin. 
It's interesting when we go to the grocery store. What do you want all of those? Well, just trust me, I need these. Okay, some of the natural flower indicators that we tested that gave good uh, acid base indicators. Uh, daylilies, which is uh, unusual. Geranium, hibiscus, hollyhocks, hydrangea, iris, blue iris, morning glories, mums. Uh, what have we got there? Pansies, peonies, petunias, these are the peas, poppies red roses, and violets. Now, what, flower, what fruits and vegetables do not, or flowers do not give indicators? Basically anything that's not red or purple, i.e. yellow, which are the other common uh, colors. So daffodils, daisies, dandelions, marigolds, yellow mums, those do not give natural indicators. I think this is a great way. Now what I would do with this in my class is I would have students bring in, bring in anything you want to test. And you know you can give them anything, you know. And it's all right if a few students don't get a natural indicator, because then they've learned what doesn't. Um, although I think everybody would want to give one. This does several things. It points out that chemistry is a natural science. I really think that's important. It also gives them ownership. You know, you can give them the thing. You can say, here's an acid base indicator, or they can essentially discover their own acid base indicator, which gives them ownership, which just makes it interesting. I think any time you can I introduce chemistry as a natural science, that that's a good thing in a classroom. The other way that I would use this then is after they've extracted and tested their indicator and come up with their color chart, students can then compare you know, uh, the things and find out, you know, that really, even though these flowers may be widely different, they really appear to have the same indicator in them, the same pigment. And that's, of course, true. The pigments, are called anthocyanins, are present in all of these compounds and, as I said, are now thought to be heart-healthy type uh, uh, natural chemicals as well. Um, the other thing that I would do then is I would have them use their natural indicators to determine the pH values of common household type chemicals or substances, as well as some laboratory solutions if you wanted to. So whether they took you know, a phosphate type detergent or something else, and they could test the pH values. And I would have them use several different indicators, whether their own and somebody else's, because that will allow them to narrow it down. Um, as I said, you know, this is one, when we did this in the lab, it, it was just a lot of fun to do, and I think your students would enjoy it as well. Thank you.